love talking. I'm sorry. That's all good. Uh, the, the soft arm guard? Oh, I know what I'm about to do. We're about to go... Off, and, the, off the rails. And under, under the sea. Off the chizang, as the kids say. They, they I don't know. Say that. Yeah, I don't... I don't know. I don't know the vibe of, like, the... the Teenagers of today, really. It changes every I'm moment. saying it, yeah, saying that with, like, not that, like, it's like, oh, the late 90s, it was, like, a lot of, like, you know, it's the cool, it's in the music, it's in everything, but a lot of, like, apathy and, like, fuck the system and all this. Just, like, being, like, that was just the way teenagers were. And it's kind of remained a, kind of similar throughout as the different trends in music and everything changed. But there was always, like, this is the thing right now, but this modern th uh, aesthetic, I guess, is the best word for it, is like all over the place. Because on one hand, you have like some some of the music coming out; it's very it's very like depressive sounding almost in a way, and like, but not depressive and like mad like punk style, but like depressive in a way where it's like. I'm just super depressed and there's nothing I can do to better my life. Yeah. It's like, I'm really worried, like, if people are getting out of high school with this mindset, that can't be good. Well, I was, I'm glad you brought this up, and I know how much you like talking about music, so I want to ask sure. about this. This might have been a little after your time, but I'm, I'm curious as to what you think about, like, uh, second and third wave emo music. If that was at anywhere, anywhere on your radar. Um... I was unfairly against emo. Oh, really? In high school, that yeah. Was, that was much of what I listened to. Um, not that I don't enjoy some stuff now, but it's it to me it was all it, it was more like the emo kids and stuff as well. Yeah. Back then, because we were stupid and <laughs> teenagers, but it was like you guys are trying to like be hang out with the punks, kids, and stuff, but you were not you're not that like. No. You're just, you're not angry, you're, you're sad about things. And that's, that's kind of the point I was just making, I guess. The other conversation where it's like, I don't know, I, I don't, it just wasn't really a change, it wasn't really a change of approach or anything, it was just a different style. Yeah. I, I asked about this because I was just talking to uh, my roommates about it yesterday. We stayed up until like two in the morning yesterday talking nice. about emo music specifically emo music um so like so i live with a married couple mm -hmm. and they could not be anywhere they could not be any closer like with near misses with music interests while at the same time being perfectly synced up with music interests okay so like his favorite band is afi all right while she really likes more like indie emo stuff um but what I'm, where I'm going with this is, like, we, we got to talking about, like, the stuff from the mid-aughts. There he goes. Oh, I'll well, see ya. Remember him from the beginning? Yeah, he was and all so big and scary, him. and that all you need to do is try to do death proof and stone proof on your characters, and that's about it. And that's how, that's what we call progress. Mm hmm. But, um, yeah, we were talking about, like, how. The lyrics for emo music from like the mid aughts to maybe like 2013 or so, because that was like the period of it. We had this whole series of lyrics that you definitely couldn't do now. You couldn't yeah. get away with. Yeah. Like, we were listening to a song by a band called Bayside, because he was like, all right, I'm going to show you, like, the, the gnarliest lyrics for a song ever. And the chorus for that song was something like, um, take my razor and sign your name on it so everyone knew that you used to love me or something like that. <laughs> it's like, sign your name. You with, play sign your name on my wrist with my razor. going to play him some G.G. Allen sometime. Ugh. <laughs> love yeah, G.G., but, you know. It was stuff like that. And, like, they were making the point, like, emo music still exists, but in a new form, like, Billie Eilish now is, yeah. like, emo music. I um but it's different. Yeah, I I think I think it's what's an, one thing that is important to say about it is like and I like this song but like Metro Station Shake It like my joke is like these are the happiest horniest emos I've ever <laughs> seen in my life. 
It's like, because seeing... Oh, here, we're in the temple. Uh, we can get Anima here. All right. Fall. The weird fly trap mummy. And all you gotta do is make sure you go back and get the treasure chest in every temple. Oh, okay. So that's like doing that on the way here, you know. Besides getting like, like for example, for Yuna the Rod to say that like, you'll use her the majority of the game. Because mm -hmm. it's so good. But uh, to continue that conversation, what, I, what happened with that is a lot of what happened with like pop punk in the 90s. Mm -hmm. I love um, pop punk. Me too. Um... I, I love all punk and metal, really, but, uh, especially, um, where there became a lot of, like, knockoff bands. Mm -hmm. Okay. That even yeah. happened to, like, hair metal in the 80s, you know, and stuff like that, yeah, too. Yeah, describe knockoff pop punk. Um, so, like, that's a I good would, question. I, I, I really didn't listen to too much. The pinnacle of pop punk to me is, like, Blink-182. Sure. So, like... I actually... Go ahead, but I, I actually uh, we did like a Mount Rushmore of this with my coworker. Oh, okay. One day, All right. yeah. Um, but yeah. And they're on it. They're my number one. They're one of my favorite bands. Yeah, yeah. The first like six albums or so are just awesome. Yeah. Um, my question is, if at, if that's pop punk, what counts as knockoff pop, pop punk? Um. I would say a band that's in between that and emo. Okay. Like, like one that comes to mind for me is like Yellow Card. Okay, Yellow Card. I, or well, so, um, I don't know about that. I, I, this is the thing. I don't really know too many of the knockoff bands in that genre. American Hi-Fi. That's, yeah, that's a good one. Well, um, I'd call that, uh, well, I don't know, that, that leans more alternative. There's no more still. final the, Well, here's... Here's an interesting case, um, like what happened with Green Day, because their first, two of their first three albums are wildly loved, like by the punk kids that I was like a part of in middle school and high school, but it's like, so this early stuff where you guys are just like these snot-nosed punks and then give a shit is super cool, but then when you came back with American Idiot, which is still decent music... But you're like wearing eyeliner and dressed in all black and stuff uh -huh. now. It's like you're definitely not an emo band. No, they you know like, they started they, out more punk. And they they to took like the punk. oh here's a good example. Let's say a band like Good Charlotte or something. Okay, yeah, Good Charlotte. Where it's like it's there's there some something. good songs, but like a lot of what's cool about older punk and a lot of people try to follow this is like it's more of like a show don't tell type of thing. Sure. Where it's like the Ramones, like with leather jackets and blue jeans, look super cool on stage. But it's like, do you really need to have like your eyeliner on? Like, you're not doing it for the look. You're doing it to be like, look, look how punk I am. Like, not for your own aesthetic or anything. So, are you trying to make the the claim that emo music is like knockoff punk? Um, I don't. I wouldn't necessarily say that. It's, it's a different comes from like a different emotion really um it is, like, i think it, it's definitely one of those like, it's like there's this great series about like the origin of metal and how it all branches off into things they're definitely like in the same tree they definitely branched off each other sure. um so they're super similar in a way but i wouldn't say it's a knockoff no okay I, it's a different kind of thing altogether in its own way but yeah that's the examples we gave are pretty good. Um, so now what's that Mount Rushmore of, of, of... Okay, so... What we've decided on... It's like the radio... Semi-radio friendly... Right. Pump, but you can tell, like, these guys are actually, like... They're either, like, super goofy, like Blink-182, or they're super, you know... Yeah. Like, don't give a fuck. But anyway, Blink-182, Green Day... Um, I think we said less than Jake's on there because okay. they kind of go, they kind of do their own like ska punk thing, but in a way like they were heavy on the radio, very accessible stuff, very easy. Like, I don't know. It just has a certain, that certain energy to me. Um, and then I think we said the offspring for the other one. Oh, interesting. Um, and there's one in there like that, that I always... 
honorable mention. Leave, leave, yeah, there was one, I, I kept like flip-flopping back and forth, but Less Than Jake and the Offspring were, were the two ones that I was flipping it with, so I can't really remember. But there are obviously a ton of like, that early 90s to mid 90s like punk scene that was still going on that mm -hmm. became very like there's nothing wrong with pop punk I, I want to say that to be clear you know it's one of my favorite genres personally but um just to comment quick that was going back and doing that infuriating puzzle yeah that thing looks at Xanarkand like... to get the final sphere here Yeah. I mean, there there have been worse. <laughs> In 12, there are some weapons, like, I still haven't gotten because you have to, like, fight enemies that are have super rare spawn rates and stuff and get your loot up to, like, level 100. Like, you get... The more enemies you kill of a certain thing, you get better treasure from them. That, that game is just running errands the game. Uh, I and like it, but yeah. I... I just can't, because it's that that bothers me, and also the the battle system, like, I just cannot get around, because it's like, it's the halfway point between turn-based and real-time, yeah. like, I don't like that. I know yeah. some people do, but I'm just not about it. I I mean, it wasn't till later that I really learned how to abuse, like, the gambit system, uh -huh. and set things up, but like... I don't know, I always just controlled it head on, but I, I can understand that for sure. It got some take it got some getting used to for me too. Yeah. And I I honestly prefer turn based. Or like what they did with the PlayStation One games where it's like an active timer for your character mm. and when that fills up you can take an action. Now you can do like haste or be slowed or, you know, have like an initiative thing so like you can act at the start of the battle. Yeah, you look like, dead mom yeah I never understood why she thought this was a good idea <laughs> I have to collect them all like I'm giving you you're so angry Seymour and you know you're in between worlds and people hate you for it but I'm gonna give you like a nuclear bomb <laughs> <laughs> I want you to be careful with this please um Get the Magus sisters too, right? Yep. Where are they at? They're off the calm lands yeah. uh, in their little hidden, semi hidden temple. I think they're in a weird spot because they're optional. I really like the scenery. I mean, the scenery in this game all over is awesome. And they really do a good job of like transitioning between different areas. Mm -hmm. Even if because of the PS2, it feels kind of jarring sometimes, or it's like. The Makalania Woods end, and then it's just the calm lands, and then it's a mountain? <laughs> <laughs> you know. That's how it goes. But, uh... I wanted to give him half a auto, half man, all <laughs> <laughs> And so I became... Yeah, sick. I'm gonna become death itself. Ooh, and then we have because to kill him three times, so, like, power. that really worked out for you. Blood didn't it. Yeah, I don't... He was not I don't... So I was like, that didn't Titus's commentary earlier? I was like, I never like Seymour. <laughs> yeah, we get it. Like, okay. I didn't know it then, found but I really hated that guy. Yeah. Yes. Like, who are you telling the story to? <laughs> it never was revealed to <laughs> us. This may be our last chance. I think it's it's either they're they're telling the story at the campfire to each other. Or he's telling it to, like, Jack and the afterlife. Yeah, it's hard to say. Destroy... Okay, we are going to. I gave him too much power. Well, he certainly did. Anima. Metal Gear. Did I ever tell you about the... This is, this is totally off the rails from whatever we were talking about. The first time I ever played a D&D &D character, like, in earnest, I played a Kenku, which is a, a crow boy, mm -hmm. who had the voice of Solid Snake. Nice. <laughs> I don't know why. It's Paladin Kenku. That has nothing to do with anything. Anyway. It's all good. <laughs> we're getting out of this temple. I'm, I'm going to bet we're back on the airship. 